Hey, what's going on? It's your man, Everything by John, with another episode. I'm coming right back at you with this quarantine content. <laughs> I got my main man right here. Oh, man, this, this guy right here. I just literally met him on Instagram, and I was like, man, this guy's an inspiration right here, um, especially in what he's doing. So tell everybody, the people, man, introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Patrick Thomas. Uh, I go by PJ. Um, PJ said it on Instagram, which is where we connected at. And um, I am a, a registered nurse. I worked in the ICU, surgical ICU primarily for about three mm-hmm. years. And uh, now I'm currently back in school uh, for my doctorate in nurse anesthesia, mm-hmm. um, which is another three year program. So I, mm-hmm. I just started in January. So um, I'm kind of just getting my feet wet. I'm actually, I'm actually a, a neck deep right now. It, you jump straight in, it's, it's no, no waiting in. So I'm kind of just up to my neck with, with studying and all that stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. Oh, okay. And, uh, born and raised, 305. And, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what part of Miami specifically? So I grew up in primarily Miami Shores. So right off okay. of North Miami Avenue. Um, but I have family like in the city, uh, both on my mom and my dad's side. And then we lived in North Miami Beach for a little bit. Um, mm. My family, my parents are still down there. My, my youngest sister, um, they're off of County Line Road, so they're kind of mm. like more towards Broward now. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. I, I lived there until I was about 19. Mm, okay. And then I, I moved to Baltimore for, for school. Mm. I was actually on a tennis scholarship. So oh. I, played, I played tennis in college um, at Coppin State University in Baltimore, Maryland. It's an HBCU. And um, pretty much got my, my adult life started there. And uh, I, at first, I, I really wasn't going to go into nursing. My primary focus was to do like physical therapy, but they didn't have mm-hmm. anything kind of leading into that area at the time. So I decided to kind of pick up on nursing, which I, I was interested in. I just didn't really know anybody who was a nurse. Um, I kind of had to just like figure my way out um, while I was in college. So well, I mean, but I, I, at that time, what, when you when you were growing up, I mean, uh, for, in terms of the actual inspiration or aspiration, really to get into the medical field as a nurse, I mean, where where did that come from, and how did that come about? Like, at you know, what point in that timeline? So I think that when I was younger, I watched a lot of. I didn't really watch like cartoons. I didn't really watch like the the kid channels. I watched a lot of TLC, a lot of Discovery Channel. Um, yeah a lot of documentaries when I was younger. So I think that I just innately had an interest in like science. Mm. And um, just by me being a nurse now and kind of really knowing how how it really works, it really kind of catered to my interest in seeing how the body works. It was really about seeing changes in the body and like for for better or for worse, just seeing that change and how you can make an impact. Um, I think that's what really stuck out to me the most. So I think that it was just, I don't know, I think it was just in me to to be in a position to nurture and to really care for people because um, you kind of have to have that in order to be in healthcare, period. Yeah, um, yeah, oh yeah, times, oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of times people think it's for the money. It really isn't. Sometimes the money, yeah. just, it will never equate to some of the things that you see and you experience. Um, yeah. As any healthcare provider, whether it's a nurse or a doctor or you know a patient care tech, like a lot of the stuff that you see, you just really have to have that compassion for people um, yourself. So, and growing up, I think my dad and my mom, um, they they had a, a big impact in you know instilling like that that compassion for people and treating everybody equal. And uh, I kind of just took it off from there. So. It was a lot of just their, you know, instilling values in me to really be just a good person. And uh, I kind of just, you know, took off from there. So that was inspiration, yeah. But I think it was a lot of just like how I was already that that really mm-hmm, kind of. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why that's why I asked you, because, you know, just by just by you talking, just touching upon the storyline a little bit, I could tell that something happened in between that, you know, really piqued your interest yeah. in the field. And yeah. you brought up another good point, which, um, I, you know, it's funny because I see a lot of people um, previously that, you know, they would look at the medical field and see doctors and they're just like, oh, man, they make so much money. And they would get into it just because of that. Yeah. And then I see so many people, they switch their majors, you know, they, they quit, they, you know, they're all that because they don't have that. Like yo, I didn't, I didn't have the passion. I just looked at the salaries. Yep. You know, so it, it, it you know, you, you gotta have that passion. That's you know, for anything. Yeah, 
And it's, that's, that's another point because even in the, the times that we're in now with this whole coronavirus, like it really shows um, how nurses specifically, because I, I interact with them the most and how this is really affecting them, not just because you know, they run the risk of catching this, this virus and bringing it home to their family, but you know, you're torn between, you know, I chose this profession to take care of people, but at the same time, I need to make sure that I'm good for my family. So it's, it's really a struggle to, to, you know, discern where that line is where you say, okay, I can't do this anymore without feeling guilty about abandoning patients or abandoning assignments. Um, so it, it, you really have to have that, that mindset of, I, I want to take care of people. I want to make people, you know, get better that um, some people just, you have to have it and money won't, won't, won't get you to that point. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely true. And you know, my, my mom is actually a nurse and she actually, um, but she actually works with private clients in their home. Okay. Um, but, you know, out in New York, I'm, I'm in New York, you know, um, oh, we, we, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm right in the middle of that. I'm, I'm in the epicenter of everything. Yeah. yeah. And we had that, yeah. And we had that message, you know, basically saying like, hey, you know, listen, you know, we call you, you know, no matter if you, you know, work in a hospital or, uh, well, anywhere besides a hospital, if you call you to, you know, work in a certain hospital or, you know, certain, um, know epicenter where this is going on we, we need to call you so yeah. she actually was like you know what i'm i'm not really with it like that you know what i'm saying because yeah. she had that decision like hey i came into the game you know years ago you know to to do what i have to do and i had a passion for everything and, and all of that but yeah. at this point like you just said it's like i don't i don't you know it's not is it a hundred percent worth it and yeah. now she's on um you know it's like I, I think they told her to um stay home for like another two weeks you know what I'm saying? Yeah. so you know, I mean, and I, I, I feel, I think a lot of people, you know, in the position and out the position, they feel the same way. Like, man, we want to help these people. But it's like, yeah. like you just said, I could risk, I could come back home and then my family or, and then it, it could get real ugly like that. And then at the end of the day, unfortunately, you know, it is a corporation, you know, you know, corporation based and everything like that. They're just going to get another nurse or a doctor or whoever. But, you know, I mean, but I understand, you know, it, that medical for the medical field in general is just like, you know, we need to respect them and love them way more than than the normal but like i just said i mean as soon as you don't want to do it or you back out or quit you know they're getting the next person so you, you're absolutely right and i've had this conversation with a lot of people and it's not even if if you decide not to do it if you do decide to do it and then you know you you just so you're loyal it's a lot of loyalty that you feel like you owe to the hospitals or, or whatever the case may be and something happens to you and you get sick or god forbid you pass away same thing, they're just gonna get another nurse, another doctor, another respiratory therapist. You know, they're gonna get somebody yeah. to fill that spot. So you really have to take into consideration, like, all right, yeah. let me put the money aside, let me put the, the, the career portion aside and really think what's best right. for me and my family yeah. at the end of the day because that's, that's, that's what matters. So, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, yeah. I mean, and, and also for, for the people knowing out there, the people looking at you like, man, it says nurse, Anesthesiology. I mean, that's such a title for me. I love that title, man. I, love that. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. you know what I'm saying, I see a black man with that. It's like, man, you, we made it. You know what I'm saying, but right. but tell the people like, what's the difference between you know just even in terms of like the actual position and even in school, like wise, the difference between just you know just having the title of a nurse and actually being a nurse anesthesiologist. Okay, so the difference between um, a, a nurse. Um, and a nurse anesthesiologist, or often referred to as a certified registered nurse anesthetist. Um, when you, you have to be a nurse first to become a, a CRNA. That's the term that we, is probably most common. Um, so you, you do your uh, either associate's degree in nursing or your bachelor's degree in nursing to become a nurse, a RN. Mm -hmm. um, once you become an RN, in order to become a CRNA, you have to work in an ICU. It's, it's just part of the, the qualifications to even get into okay. school. Um, okay. So you, you, you work into a big hospital, um, into an ICU. There's many ICUs that you can work into. I did the surgical ICU uh, mostly. And then when I traveled, I did some travel nursing. I did uh, a little bit of cardiac ICU, neuro ICU. So it's just different specialties yeah. that you can do. Um, and then once you get um, a good amount, at least a year of experience in an ICU, then you can apply to become a CRNA or registered nurse mm, okay, Now the difference okay. is um, as a nurse or a bedside nurse, you are under the direction of a doctor or MD or a nurse practitioner 
um, or sometimes even a physician assistant who are putting in orders for you to, to act out. And um, as a nurse, you use your clinical judgment, you use um, your, your skill set as a bedside nurse to fulfill those orders and also to make recommendations for, hey, you know, I don't think this is, this is going to work. How about we try this? You know, just that communication because you are the closest person to the patient. So you know about that patient um, pretty much more than anybody because you're there at the bedside with them 12 hours out of the day or sometimes mm -hmm. even longer if you decide to stay. So um, that's pretty much the role as an RN to kind of use that clinical judgment and, and communicate well with the, the, the rest of the team and be the advocate for the patient directly on. Um, as a CRNA or nurse anesthetist, you are uh, at the head of the bed, pr primarily in the operating room. So you are the person that's responsible for coming up with a plan. Let's say you mm -hmm. go for surgery that's, uh, I, I don't know, any kind of surgery that you're going for. The CRNA is the person that would be the person to put the tube in, you, you, know, you know, maintain your airway if you needed that. Uh, and they pretty much keep you alive. They put you to sleep, they keep you alive during the surgery, and they wake you up. And, you know, a lot of things can happen in between those times and you have to rely on the experience that you had as a bedside nurse with the ICU because you see a lot of the same drips, you use, you know, you're titrating a lot of drugs and you gain a lot more autonomy because you're the one that's, you know, uh, calling the shots. You're the one that's deciding, okay, what drug is most appropriate. You're the one that's deciding, okay, uh, I think we should do this for this patient versus a bedside nurse you're relying on the doctors and the, the nurse practitioners to make that decision for you. So you get a lot more uh, independence as a, a nurse anesthetist. And there's a lot more varying roles that you do, a lot more hands-on things that you would do as a nurse anesthetist that you, that you wouldn't do as a regular bedside nurse, for instance, um, putting in a lot of invasive lines, um, a lot of different blocks that you would do like to, to make a, a, your whole arm numb if you just needed a surgery on your arm. Like mm. you would do that as a nurse anesthetist. Um, you wouldn't be able to do that as a bedside nurse. So there's a lot mm. more responsibility that comes with being a nurse anesthetist. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot more uh, critical thinking that comes along with it. It sounds like it definitely. Yeah, exactly. So, and a, a lot more liability too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, that, 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 and that's the position that I saw myself uh, being in. I wanted to be that person that was, you know, making my own decisions and, and making my own plan for, for patients. Um, so yeah, and, but still being very, very hands-on. I didn't want to just be off in the cut telling somebody, yeah, do this and tell me how it worked. And if it don't work, then I'll think of something else. Like I wanted to be the one actually doing something too. So um, that's, that's, that's beautiful, man. I mean, you know, that basic difference. Yeah, no, that that I mean, just I, just by you inspiring to take that position of CRNA because of all of the factors that you have to play, it says a lot about you. First of all, um, and second of all, um, you know, when you say all these things, I'm like, well, I'm like, well, how far are you from a doctor? Because I mean, it sounds like a doctor position. I mean, you know, compared to everybody, everybody else in terms of being a team player and, and all the involvement. Uh, so. Uh, just not to get too much into the politics, there's a lot of politics uh, okay, okay. In, in the realm of anesthesia as mm, far okay. as the difference between a physician anesthesiologist um, and a nurse anesthesiologist. Mm. Um, if, you were to, if you were to ask me what the difference was, I would just say, you know, one is uh, the discipline is, is primarily focused on in nursing and one is in medicine because as far as what you do, uh, there is no difference. Um, we learn from the same books, the same textbooks as doc as physicians. I'll say I don't want to say doctors because mm. doctors is a broad term, and mm, we okay. are uh, you know now in the realm where we can earn our doctor doctorate degree as well. So, mm. um, in terms of the difference between a physician anesthesiologist and a nurse anesthesiologist, um, physician anesthesiologists go through a lot more schooling. Um, they I have to go to yeah. med school. Well, first they have mm. to get into med school, which means they have to get a you know, four years, they get into med school. Med school, is, I think, is another four years. They mm -hmm. have to do a residency, uh, mm -hmm. which is, I think, three or four years, I believe. Yeah. I'm not sure. Depending, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they can choose to do a fellowship or they can just become an attending uh, physician with a CRNA. And I think, I think in total, that's about, what, 10, 10 years or something like that? Something close around, around that ballpark. Um, mm -hmm. 
as far as becoming a nurse anesthesiologist, it can be a little bit more streamlined, a little bit of a shorter um, time frame. So you get your, you have to have your bachelor's, which is a four year program. So you're looking at four years of, of just school to get your nursing degree. And then you need at least one year of critical care experience. So that's five years. Um, and now most um, CRNA programs in the country are starting to uh, become doctorate programs, which means that's another three years. So you're looking at eight years at minimum that uh, it would take to become a nurse anesthesiologist. Um, it, it can vary depending on how long you stay at the bedside. If you, you know, want to get out just at one year, then it's a shorter time. Some people stay five, six, 11 years before mm. they decide, hey, I want to go back to school. Me, mm, personally, okay. yeah. I decided, I was like, look, I'm, I'm getting out of here. So I was, I was at the bedside for about mm, a year and a half before I really started okay. trying to get back into school. So mm, um, okay. honestly, man, it's, it's really, it's really not, not a big difference as far as what we do. Um, it's just how uh, certain people see us, that they feel like we shouldn't be in the position that we are to make those decisions. Uh, for whatever reason, but hey, it's a fight that we're continuing to fight and kind of advocate for our profession because some people don't want us around. So, and, and, and like you said, that comes into the politics too because you know yeah. people <laughs> people I know they yeah, people I know that actually work in the hospital in, in different positions like they kind of see the politics from afar. They not yeah. even nurse anesthesiologists or physicians, but they see what's going on like you know different little languages that people have against yeah. other people or talking about other people in a certain yeah. way or you know, feeling like they're on top of, you know, that's all in the realm of politics. So, yep. You know, it's funny because one of my, um, one of my, one of my friends on the, on the, on the bad side of things with the whole coronavirus, you know, me being in New York, he worked in the hospital, he's a um, lab technician. Okay. And, um, you know, for the first time, they actually, <laughs> they actually asked them to work overtime in a morgue, you know, mm -hmm. delivering bodies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's working with, uh, he's working with, um, you know, I guess the, the regular morgue guy and every single time, that he's bringing a body out, he's hearing on the um, on the walkie-talkie like, "Hey, anesthesiologist is the bed one, anesthesiologist is the bed two, anesthesi and like, and he's basically saying like, "That's that's when they died already." Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, so it, it's crazy out here. You know? It's it's definitely crazy, and you're gonna start hearing that a lot um, because what's happening is you know everybody's going into such respiratory distress that they need a breathing tube to, to keep them alive in a sense, but. Um, what I'm seeing now, just from looking at a lot of like uh, physician pages and just different videos, I mean, we, we thought it was one thing and we thought we knew how, you, how to treat it, but um, there's some, some doctors who feel like that's not what it is. So it's, it's almost like it's up in the air, you know, we're, we're doing trial and error at this point to figure out what works because clearly what we're doing is not working to save people as much because it's, it's almost like if you get that tube put in, it's almost like a death sentence at this point. That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, well, hold on. I mean, you just said like, you know, you, you need to you know, have that, that, that breathing assistance, but I'm seeing yeah. people in the ventilators and they dying. I'm like, yeah. mm -hmm. what's going on? It's scary. So, it's you know, that, scary. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to ask you too. I mean, at this point, if it's trial and error and people are kind of, you know, having different opinions and different, you know, ways of going about, you know, either stopping the virus or just even preventing from getting it. I mean, for the regular people, you know, the general population, I mean, in, in, in your medical, you know, opinion, what would you, what kind of advice would you say for, for people that actually don't have it yet? I mean, not yet, but not, don't yeah, have it. I get you And, you know, yeah, they're trying to prevent it, you know, in, in terms of like really, because, you know, it, I, I'm just speaking as a, as a New York resident. I mean, we around each other a lot, you know, because like, a, a lot of people, they're, still not listening you know a lot of people still yeah. not wearing gloves and masks a lot of people not taking precautions a lot of people see the news and still don't really understand how serious this thing is yeah. so you know i really want to know like in your opinion what, what do you think about that and how can we prevent that so um i think social distancing is 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 key but the issue is people are only social distancing themselves from people they don't know they're taking it as oh i know this person i hang with this person all the time Talk about it. Totally and uh, they're feeling like, oh, it's okay, because I know this person, that's my sister, that's my homeboy. No, um, because at the end of the day, you really don't know who that person is talking to or interacting with through their day. And they might not even be interacting. It could be something that they, they went to the grocery store. They might have not talked to anybody, but they're touching. They might not be washing their hands. And they come and talking to you, you dap them up. That's transmission right there. And, and, and people, young, younger people, 
Um, we already, already have like kind of like this God complex. Oh, it's not gonna happen to me. It's not gonna happen to me. But we're starting to see that a lot more younger people are being affected by it. Um, one, because of the whole social distancing thing um, and this mentality, oh, if I die, I die. I've been hearing that a lot too, which is, which right, is crazy. Right, right. Um, but as far as what you can do, the biggest thing is washing your hands. I've been seeing for myself, people in the grocery store wearing gloves, they're touching stuff on the shelf, on the counters, they're touching their phones, they're going inside their bags, touching their face with the gloves on. I'm like, that defeats the whole purpose. Um, I think gloves give people a false sense of security when they're not doing it the right way, because with gloves, you're supposed to change them after everything. Mm -hmm. um versus just washing your hands that's like the easiest mm -hmm. thing to do or carrying around hand sanitizer um and just cleaning your hands as often as you can i've been telling people mm -hmm. like look even if you gotta wear it around your wrist like like a hand sanitizer wear it because when you look at your hands like oh shit let me hand sanitize yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you know you're good so um biggest thing is washing your hands and trying to stay away from people as, as much as you can um i know the whole quarantine idea is giving people like oh i need to stay in my house you can get out. It's just about who's outside around you. That's the issue. And a lot I've been hearing people are having cookouts and all this kind of stuff. Like you can't you can't do that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that's getting people in trouble. So even if you want to get outside and, and walk around or you know walk through a trail or um, I go fishing a lot, but it's not I'm not around people when I go fishing. So um, you know if you are the person that don't really have those type of extracurriculars that you're into and you need that social aspect, the best thing is just to stay inside and just deal with it, honestly. But washing your hands, the masks are okay, uh, but at the same time, they're not being worn properly either. Um, you know, I'm seeing people putting them all over just their mouths and their nose are exposed, or, you know, they're not securing it properly. It's just, if you're gonna do those things, you need to educate yourself on the the, the proper way to do it yeah, to yeah. protect yourself and, and not just no. have a false security behind it because I have a mask, but you're not wearing it right. Or I have gloves, but you're yeah, still yeah. touching everything, you know? So um, yeah. it's just, if, but the biggest thing is just washing your hands, keeping your hands washed. When I go out, I don't really, I don't wear a mask. I don't wear gloves, but I keep my hand sanitizer with me. Um, I try to sanitize as much as I can. And I try to stay with some people. Like I don't really go in spaces that are gonna be too crowded. I just go to the store and that's it really. Got you, got you. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, those are those are excellent key points. And one thing you said, the last thing you said was, you know, <laughs> because at the end of the day, I mean, we we kind of, as a population, we were rushing to this. So it's like, oh, yep. now all of a sudden we got to wear masks, we got to wear gloves. So yep. it's like the education part is like, we don't have time for that. Or it's like, we just doing whatever the next person is doing. And right. then on top of that, me, uh, you know, us as a people, we we don't, we don't listen anyway, you know, we're not going to do it yeah, the right, too, the right way, do, you know, yeah. nine out of ten, so yeah, we can see the, you see right here on the news, people dying, and we still want to go outside, and I see, I literally was um, in the store earlier today, and I seen one of my, um, you know, colleagues or friends or whatever, he had no mask, no glove on, he had, you know, he's just walking around, he's like, yo, the government, is, this is a scam, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, and, and, and real quick as well, you know, because <laughs> I'm, I'm having like a little, well, not really a mini battle, it should even be an argument really, but for all the pregnant women out there, uh -huh. if 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 they you know if they say for example you know they they are like maybe an hour away from you, and mm -hmm. they have no need to come in in another vicinity like an hour away, would you recommend <laughs> that they could leave the house and random and just be free, you know, doing whatever back and forth from a, a distance like that? So hold on. So you're saying if you're pregnant, as far as like traveling? Yes. Um, I mean, it, it pretty much poses the same risk. If you don't have to go out, just don't go out. Um, because now you're not only, it's not your concern, it's you and the baby. So it's two people oh, now. Man. Um, I haven't seen or heard of too many cases about pregnant women con con contracting uh, coronavirus. Um, but... I don't see it being any different than if they weren't pregnant. And exactly. now you have a baby to think about too. So exactly. Um, exactly. you should be extremely cautious because yes. you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and real quick, I mean, cause you know, you come from the medical field, you obviously take orders. You have to, you have to put orders out there. Don't you hate, especially if somebody of your, of your education and value and, and learning and everything, don't you hate when somebody just doesn't listen? 
Man, I, I've been dealing with people who don't listen for, for years now. And, and I just, I mean, I, I just try to, to uh, you just try to educate. What you learn in nursing is that you, you can, what's the saying? You can, you can bring the horse to the wood, but you can't make him drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just how yeah. it is. Yeah, like I right. can, I can, I can. We can sit here and talk to 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 my face turn as blue as my shirt, right. and people will still hold on to what makes the most sense to them. Exactly. Yep. And just do what they're gonna do anyway. Exactly. So that's um, it. That's it. <laughs> you know, I I I I don't like it, but at the same time, it's like people are gonna do what they want to do, mm-hmm. uh, which is unfortunate because that's what's getting us in a situation that's why we're not flattening the curve is because people feel like well i'm gonna do what i want to do anyway or yeah. you know, i'm grown you can't tell me to stay inside but it's like yeah. you know you, you you can't be selfish in this moment and i think a lot exactly. of this goes in america selfishness especially with like people running yes. to the stores and buying up everything yes. 12 and 13 yes. packs of, of yeah. tissue like yeah not the only person so uh it's a lot of exposure you know inside of healthcare and outside of healthcare. Um, showing the lack of preparedness that America had for something like this. Um, it's just a lot, but, you know, people yeah. will, will learn in their own time and you just have to, you know, kind of look out for yourself in, in these type of times to make sure that you're good first before you can try to uh, help anybody else. Same thing when they tell you on a plane, put your mask on before you try to help, your, you, you know, your neighbors. So that's true. So true. So true. Man, man, that's, that's beautiful, man. And I, I try to tell people, you know, and listen, but, you know, in life, if you don't listen, you're just going to find out the hard way. That's it, you know, in any field, you know what I'm saying? But um, but also, relating back to the medical field, you know, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm just getting such a good vibration from you, man, even before speaking to you. Like, that's why I reached out to you. Because yeah. um, you was actually featured on the, uh, on the um, I forgot the name of that, that, that uh, it's, it's, a, it's an Instagram page that features a lot of, you know, black success. And that's how I found you. Um, yeah. It's one of them. I don't. I don't know. It's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 just by you saying it, you like I've been on a lot of them, man. Which one is it? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I was just gonna say, in terms of inspiration, I mean, what you know, what would you tell the next person who is like seventeen, eighteen, or even maybe like twenty, twenty-one? They did a few years in college, and they're like, man, you know, I'm thinking about being a nurse, so I'm thinking about getting into the medical field. I mean, what what kind of what kind of advice would you give that person in terms of like trying to well, and getting into the game and also just trying to streamline everything to get to where they want to be in the field. Oh, man. My best piece of advice is to get a mentor. Get a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, I have several mentors, uh, some who are nurses, some who are not nurses. Uh, just people that, that have been where you are trying to get is key because, um, like I said, I was the first person in my family to go to college. So wow. I, congratulations, congratulations on that. Wow. wow, that's huge, man. I didn't really have um, something to, re- to, to rely on or, to, or to, to refer to on how college worked. So um, I kind of was just winging it. But I, I knew I wanted to, to, to be something. I knew I wanted to do something more than what, you know, I didn't just want to just work a job and, and have no passion behind it. So, um, and even without me realizing that I was gaining mentors, I was because people were seeing things in me that I didn't see at the time. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think I I look back and I thank those people so much. um, And I keep in contact with them because they were essential for me streamlining where I am now. And a a key moment was uh, my senior year in in nursing school. And just 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 to to kind of talk about my journey in nursing school. Yeah, 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 ahead, yeah. At all. Yeah, um, yeah. I started nursing school. I was still a college athlete at the time, which was almost unheard of being a nursing student and being a... Uh, uh, yeah, I never heard of that one. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's tough. Yeah, so it um, I got through my first, first, first semester fine through nursing school. My second semester was horrible. And I ended up failing out of nursing school. And um, I had to take, I had to sit a year out. And I remember that year, I was like, man, this is, this is not what I came here to do. Like, this is not, this is not cool. So that next year, when I got back into nursing school, like, it was no stopping me. And I, I had professors that were like looking out for me. And one of my professors now that I, I still keep in contact with, um, I remember she pulled me to the side one day. She was like, what's going on with you? And I was like, you know, it was my maternity class and I just 
was not interested at all. And I was like, I just, I'm not feeling it. Like, this is not what I want to do. And she was like, well, you need to figure something out because if not, you're not, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to move on to the next semester. I'm like, you're right. And she would talk to me, like, I would always be in her office and we kind of went through what I needed to get for, you know, all of my grades for the remainder of the semester to try to pass. And I failed nurse, I failed that class by like, it was, I think I, you need a seven, at least a 75 to pass. And I think I had like a 74 point, like three, oh, so they couldn't even round oh. it up. So it was, it was, it was tragic for me. So yeah. um, fast forward, I came back with like a vengeance almost. And I just did everything that I could to make sure that I was successful. And part of that was me running into like my clinical faculty. Like I remember my senior year, um, I ran into my clinical instructor from my critical care class and her name is Kendra Isaac. And, um, she was talking to me one day and she pulled me to the side again. She was like, what do you want to do when you graduate? And I was like, I, I don't know. I had worked in the ER at the time as a, as a patient care technician. And I was mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm going to work in the ER, I guess, because that's all I know. She was like, well, why don't you want to work in the ICU? And I was like, well, I don't know. I, I, I never been in the ICU. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about it. She was like, you know, we need more black people in the ICU, especially black men. She was like, you're going to do your practicum with me in the ICU. And I was like, really? And that wasn't my plan at all. But I was like, okay. And I'm glad that she did that because um, that pretty much, that was what, what really introduced me to, to CRNA because I saw one during my shift with her. And this, they, it was a patient, they were really going downhill, respiratory distress, they need to be intubated. And this lady came, this black lady, came up to the unit, went to the room, was asking questions like, what's going on? Put the tube in, did what she had to do, and left. I was like, who, who is that? And she was like, oh, that's a CRNA. And that was really was like, bing, that's what I want to do. Yeah, 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 and, that spoke to you a lot. Right, but had I not had that talk with, with Kendra, I would have never had that exposure. And she really put me on game about a lot about like the ICU and mm -hmm. nursing and like how to get my first nursing job. So, mm -hmm. and I thank her so much because she's partly a part of the reason why I've gotten to this point. So I'm saying all that to say, getting a mentor or finding a mentor is essential, you know, for anybody who's in high school, uh, who, who's been out of school for a long time and just thinking like, I need to change my life and do something. You have to have somebody to give you that blueprint. And um, you know, I feel like I'm in a position to do that and, and I try to do it as much as I can. And I have a lot of people who talk to me and who ask me questions about it. And I'm always like ready to just give everything that I have and that, that I know to them so, so they can put themselves in a situation to give back to, because that's what it's about at the end of the day. It really is about giving yeah. back. So, so my yeah. first piece of advice would be to, to find a mentor. Uh, my second piece of advice would be to, um, get rid of people that are not aligned with you and are not mm. um, on that same you, way. You, you, you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll you know, really, really. a little bit because um, <laughs> a lot of times we hold on to people that we know for comfortability reasons. Mm -hmm. and, you know, those people, we may have grown up with them. Um, but sometimes that's what holds us back. That's oh, what holds yeah. us back from, from moving out of the city. Uh, that we've been in all of our lives or, or, you know, going to school because you're like, yeah. okay, am I going to leave this person? Right. What am I going to do? Who am I going to know? And when I left Miami, I knew nobody. I knew nobody at all. I went to Baltimore with a suitcase and a backpack and that was it. And, um, you know, I had to find my way. So a lot of, and I understand that can be scary, but sometimes that's what holds us back, that fear and that level of comfortability. And one thing that I learned from another mentor was get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's right. And, and That's you know, right. that put me in a place to say, you know, I got to branch out. I have to expand and do more. So, you know, sometimes we have to kind of look at the people that are around us and say, look, we cool. It's no hard feelings, but I have to do this for myself. And you, you kind of do right. yourself and you can't feel guilty about it. That's um, right. And I, I've had to do that with some people too. And it's no hard feelings, but you know, at the end of the day, it was the decision that I needed to make in order to get to where I am now. So get a mentor and you know, be willing to, to enter in comfortable, uncomfortable situations. Excellent, 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 excellent. Man, I mean, first of all, man, what an inspiring story, man. And, and I, I love how you talked about, you wanted to you know, put that part in about the nursing school because 
like you said, a lot of people, they see the inspiration, they see the success, but they don't know the story. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know exactly what you went through. Like, the fact that you, you know, failed that nursing class and then came back. I mean, I know, I literally know a lot of people that it happened the exact same way. You know, there, yeah. there was some type of crazy event that happened that, you know, it, it, it was a setback, but it was really just for a major comeback. And look yeah. at you now. You know, so all of these, all of these things compiled together. I mean, I mean, the, the mental part is just so important. I mean, because like you said, just being around Kendra, you know, just having that energy and having that vibe and someone that was already in that position, you know, really yeah. just to, just so willing to, you know, put you in the game. I mean, right there, just, you know, just off of that vibration, you can get to where you want to go. Right. So, you know, that's important, especially in our community, you know, we don't have mentors like that, you know, in that way, you know, we have OGs on the street or whatever, you know, it's whatever it is. That, and that's a, that's a loosely uh, worded term, you know, OG, but we need yeah. mentors, like you say, mentors, you know, so that's, that's so important, man. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate yeah, that. Cool. You know, I, I was really thinking, you know, I might have you come on here like once every week, like, like Dr. Fauci, you know, with the, with the <laughs> talk bill, you know, <laughs> like give us weekly, you know, little yeah. tips, you know, like, yeah, yeah, because this is, this is beautiful, because I don't even know any, uh, um, any other platform where it's like, people, that's of your, of, you know, of your, of your, of your um, beginnings and of your, you know, you know, obviously we, of our people, you know, I, yeah. it's not, it's not a platform out there for us, you know, to really yeah. speak our mind, like on a, on a consistent basis as well. So right. every time we look on the TV, we see that the Fauci, you know, shout out to all them people, well, not shout out to them, but <laughs> we right. need to be out there more, you know, for our Absolutely. people, like you say, you know, cause I, I was thinking the whole time when you talk about Kendra, I'm like, yo, well, you could be the next Kendra right now for the other, right. you know, for the next, um, you know, person out there that want to, you know, do whatever in life. Yeah, the right Absolutely. way, and that's yeah. why I I, I started because I started my YouTube channel too, and oh, I was like, no, no. I I started ooh, like last year sometime, but I wasn't really too serious about it, and then I started like getting the feedback from it. I'm like, okay, mm. I, I feel like I'm I'm doing something with this. Yeah. So um, because it's it is because of the Kendras and because of the you know Dr. Harvins and the people that that put me in this position, I'm like, I would really be doing myself an injustice if I didn't put myself in their position to give back to somebody else too. So I try to do as much as I can while trying to, you know, still get myself to where I want to, where I want to get to, um, you know, without letting it drain me too much. But I mean, it's, it's, it's been going good. And, you know, social media is, is a blessing nowadays if you use it for the right reasons. Right. And I think that it's, it's giving people like you and people like me who are trying to, you know, get the exposure for, for people like us who look like us, you know, to people who don't think things like being a nurse anesthesiologist or a doctor is possible, you know? So, um, you know, I've been trying to use social media to my advantage um, and it's, it's been going good, you know? Uh, it it, it kind of helps you, you know, stay in line with yourself and what you're trying to do and keep you responsible. So people are like, that's a hypocrite right there. I'm not trying to follow yeah. him. You know, so <laughs> in, in that regard, it keeps you, you know, keeps you, keeps you on a straight track. So, man, yeah. I mean, well, listen, I mean, honestly, if you already have to, well, first of all, you know, whatever links you want me to put in, I'll, put, I'll definitely put it in my bio. And I definitely want people to, uh, if you put, you know, content out there, I mean, I could already see you blowing up. I don't know any literally nurse anesthesiologist that's literally on YouTube or something like that, like yeah. really on a consistent basis, putting out, you know, maybe like tips of the day or, you know, just saying how they feel about right. like, what's going on. I think. I mean, if you do that, I mean, listen. You know. We, we, so you, there. So there. There. So uh, when I when I was looking into how to get into CRNA school, uh, I hopped on YouTube. And was like, how to get into CRNA school? And I there there were uh, two African American females that I can think of that really stuck out, um, and they both they both graduated CRNA school uh, this this past year. Uh, mm -hmm. which is Aisha Allen and or Dr. Aisha Allen now and Dr. Charnel Lewis. Um, mm -hmm. Charnel went to school, uh, University of Buffalo, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, in New York, and uh, Aisha went to Duke. And wow. um, they were really, really like the pioneers for black CRNAs, you know, giving out information because anesthesia is like nurses' best kept secret, nobody really mm -hmm. wants to talk about it. And for the most part, anesthesia is all white. Mm -hmm. Nurse anesthesia, that is. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm a part of this mentorship program called Diversity CRNA. It's headed by Dr. Walina Gould. And, um, you know, just stats for 
nurse anesthesia, there's about 53, roughly 53,000 uh, CRNAs in, in the US. Of that 53,000, only I think 1.3% are African American. Wow. Um, like 2.5 are Hispanic, 2.7 is, you know, Asian, and like 80 something percent is, is, is white. So, wow. you know, Dr. Gould is really trying to, to get this initiative out, not only for black people, but people of all colors to say, look, and, and minorities and disadvantaged, you know, backgrounds to say, you can do this too. So, um, you know, when I saw them, I was like, okay, cool. Like, but there wasn't, there was no black males though that I saw. So I think that I, I'm hoping that I'm like the first black male on YouTube, the face on YouTube for, for, for nurse anesthesia. So that's um, what I'm saying. Yeah, I, mean, I don't but, know anybody. I don't. I don't see anybody. I don't know. I don't know either. But there, but there are a lot of black uh, male nurse anesthetists, and you know, we just did that 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 uh, TikTok video, Lord. That, that's that, yeah, That's what I seen. Right. Exactly. All exactly. CR, all CRNA yeah. students. You know. So. Yeah. Um, and that's only a portion. So it's just getting our faces out there to say we're in these positions. You can be in it too. Um, that is kind of the message that we all want to to relay. To, yes. to anybody, you know. So, yeah. Whew, I mean, man, this is this. First of all, I mean, I could just literally sit here and stay on what's going on because I just, I just, I just love, that. I just love the inspiration, man. But right. I love your story so much, and I definitely, like I said, I definitely want to keep you on here. You know, I definitely want to do some type of, you know, once a week at least for the people. Um, right. You know, just you, you know, just interpreting your thoughts, um, just right. letting the people know what's going on, even with medical school, you know how to get into you know everything just everything you know literally right, i want right. to get you on more um you know to have you have you uh you know expose yourself more out there and um you know of course you you know i'm gonna have you put your youtube and everything um, down below in the description and uh man i really appreciate the time man i mean like you said i re i can't think and that's that's a huge problem i can't think you know you already you just laid out the statistics but on the, on the, on these platforms like you literally don't see it as well so i really need people like you to really to really put that punch in man because it's out there it's possible yeah um you know it, you know it's possible it's there the mentorship is there if you look for it as well um and i really appreciate it. i really appreciate it you absolutely know? man i appreciate you i appreciate you you know asking me to, to come on here and, and just talk and just you know just talk because that's yeah. it that's, that's <laughs> just talk. Talk. you gotta just yeah, talk yeah. yeah 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 that's what it's about that's what it's yeah. about you know just just putting the board out there and I'm yeah. uh, really taking it from there. So, man, I appreciate it. And um, do you have any other other words for the people out there? Any type um, of inspiration? Anything? Yeah, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll link up. We we'll definitely talk yeah. about you know some more you know uh, some more some more meetups. And yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. Just, just stay safe. Um, yeah, stay safe. Keep your hand sanitizer on deck. If you don't have any, you got to make some. I had to make some yeah. for, my, for myself because they were out of stock everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I had to make some myself. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah stay inspired stay hungry and yeah. we'll talk some more excellent excellent man that was a that's another another beautiful episode you see me putting out this this rare content man so yeah uh appreciate the love and like continue like share and subscribe and salute to my guy right here nurse anesthesia let, let them let them know your info real quick your, your, your whole name and where they can contact you real quick so um uh patrick thomas on facebook um pj said it on instagram and then my YouTube channel is the SRNA Drip, S R N A, and then D R I P. Um, it's pretty much all my all my major platforms. Really, um, you can always DM me about any questions or anything related to you know trying to get into school, nursing school. Any questions about like you know study tips? And I have a lot of videos on pretty much how to get into CRNA school and my journey up until this point. So you can always refer to those videos too. Um, excellent, but excellent, yeah, excellent. that's pretty much it. Excellent, man. So you already, you, you, you see, he already got the game planted on. He, he already did. Right. What he got to do. <laughs> you know what I'm I don't have to tell him much, but either way, I'm going to put all of his links in the description below. And, uh, that, like I said, that was another great episode and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. All right. Peace out. <laughs> Dope interview.